This is the five Tibetans. We start by making circles. We take our arms out by our side, check that the hands are in line with the shoulders, and then turn your gaze to look over your middle finger of your right hand, and then make circles. I'm going to demonstrate 21 circles. If you need to stop at, at 3 or at 7, then you can do so, but the goal is to build up to 21. When you finish your 21, just bring your hands to your navel, rest your palms down on the abdomen, and the tips of the fingers, the index fingers are touching. Big deep breaths, tongue resting on your upper palate, sealing that circuit of energy. Knees are soft, let the energy flow through the body. This is diamond mudra, as we cultivate the energy in our lower dantian. Stay here with your eyes closed until your head stops spinning. And take a deep breath in, reach up tall. And exhale down into squat pose now. So we're just opening our feet as wide as is comfortable. If you can come down with your feet flat, that's great. If you're not there yet, that's fine as well. Most of us can get to about here. Let's bring your hands to the floor and then rock from side to side. One foot touching the floor completely and then the other. Then once we feel confident, we can place our feet firmly on the earth, hands to the heart and we're down. We're now going to do our leg raises. Now there's different ways of doing the leg raises. If you've got a sore neck, I recommend just keeping your head connected to the earth, flex the feet as you raise the legs up, take a deep breath in and out before we start. Now the general rule of yoga is when we open the body, we inhale, when we flex the body, we exhale. So as we're opening the body, finish the exhalation you're on. Inhale, lower the heels toward the earth. Exhale and raise the heels up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, raise. So take it deeper. Raise the chin and chest to the floor as you exhale and inhale as you open the body up. I find it even easier to support the back by placing my hands underneath my back. This creates some leverage into the lumbar spine. So if you'd like, you can either place your hands flat or I prefer interlacing my fingers. And then we'll continue. So we exhale, compressing the body, inhale, opening up. When you've done your 21, just draw the knees towards you, listen to your body, release your back any way you like. Some people may prefer rocking from side to side, all the way over to your elbows, releasing your erector spinae muscles. Others may prefer making knee to chest curls. Always start in the yin direction, anti-clockwise first, and then go clockwise just to balance the polarities of energy in the body. When you've got enough momentum, I want you to take hold of your big toes and rock to sit up. It's important to try and get the core strength to be able to do this. We're going to come all the way onto all fours and nestling ourselves back on the mat. So from here, to prevent knee injuries, I'd like you just to roll your mat up it's always good to have extra padding on the knees. And then have your fists between the knees so the knees are in line with the hips. Depending on whether you've got toes that are cramping or not, you can either have the toes curled under or have the toes flat to the floor. It's whatever feels best for you. And so this is a variation of the camel pose or strasana. We bring the healing hands to our kidneys, roll the shoulders back and down. Now the simplified version is with the toes curled under, take a deep breath in, and then just lean back at about a 45 degree angle, then come back to center. Inhale as we come up, exhale as we lean back. If you want to take it further, just release the hands down by your side, and keep looking forward, eyes at eye level, but slightly depress the chin to the chest to lengthen through the cervical spine. And let's carry on, building up to either 3, 7, or 21. And again, reach up tall, release the toes, and then hinge forward from the hips, planting our hands to the earth, allowing the sitting bones and heels to come together. So first we walk our hands as far forward as they go, then we push the heels of the hands to the floor, and then allow the forehead to slowly come down toward the earth. So if you have low blood pressure or you're struggling to get the forehead to the floor, create two fists and rest the forehead down. 
relaxing the shoulders back and down. If you have high blood pressure, you can do the same, but what is better is to just rest the heels of your hands under your chin. And then walk your elbows further forward, so we're lengthening through our upper trapezius and rhomboids, releasing through our upper back tension. By having our sitting bones and our heels, we're helping to lengthen the lower back, just to release any strain that might have been caused. Okay, so then coming back up, unroll the mat, and then we'll swivel our legs around. And this is something that you may need blocks for, so I'll just grab some blocks. long arms like me then you don't really need the blocks but I'll show you the modification just in case. So the movement is basically going from Dandasana rod pose and then up into our tabletop pose. So a tabletop is where the pelvis is in line with the knees and shoulders so this doesn't count this is what counts and then from here we're coming down into our rod pose so I'm doing it a little bit jerkily because I don't need the blocks, but a lot of people may. It's not about how advanced you are in the pose, it's simply to do with your body ratio. So, let's start in tabletop. Knees and feet are in line with the hips, so they're about two fists apart. Fingers are pointing forward. Some people find that it really hurts their wrists if they point them forward. If you want to turn your fingers away, you can, but I personally find it adds more strain to the wrist, but as each body is different, do what feels best for you. Let's inhale, lift the hips, and then exhale, if you can, swing on through into Dandasana. Building up to 21 rounds. When you've done your 21, we'll come back onto our knees and just stretch out the tops of our feet. Release the wrists, making some vinyasas and wrist rotations. And then release the hands down by your side. Stretch the top of your feet by raising the right knee as you inhale. Exhale, lower. Inhale, left knee. Exhale, lower. And then finishing off our fifth part of the five Tibetans, into the up dog, down dog, which is a lot easier than the yoga variation because we're keeping our toes flexed. So from here, take a deep breath in, curl the toes under, exhale, lifting up into downward dog, just walking out the dog to begin with. Hips high, nodding the head yes, shaking the head no. Stay as you are. If you have high blood pressure, I don't want you to lower the head below the heart. So a modification is against the wall. And I'll show you that in a minute. But for now, resuming from our walking stance, walking the dog, keep the feet flat, have the feet two fists apart, sorry, keep the feet still, the feet are two fists apart, roll the shoulders away from the ears, so externally rotate the biceps, lift the hips high to take the weight off the wrists. So staying on the balls of the feet the whole time, take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out, empty all the excess carbon dioxide from the body. Inhale to upward dog. Exhale to downward dog. Yes, it's just a variation of upward dog. It's a lot easier than the yoga version. So there's our three rounds. We're trying to build to seven and then 21. Finishing on the outward breath, lower the knees down. And then come down onto the floor into crocodile. So just allow the forehead to rest on the hands, allow the heels to roll out. If you can, cross the big toes over, otherwise just allow the feet to be separate. 